We can all agree that 2020 has been a real crap fest. And I know I'm looking forward to toasting in a new year, hopefully full of positive changes. Since we're all still under COVID lockdown, most of us are going to be bringing in the new year from the comforts of our own home without the usual fireworks and party. So a great way to bring a little glamor into the festivities is by mixing up a fancy champagne cocktail. So I've invited an old friend of mine, Ping of Pingalicious, to help us mix up some rockin' drinks. First though, let's get some champagne. Being in Northern California, I've gotta promote the Napa and Sonoma wineries. There are so many fantastic vineyards up there crafting delicious sparkling wines. From the old Grand Dame Corbel, to French imports like Domaine Chandon and Domaine Carneros, to American contemporary powerhouses like Gloria Ferrer. Here are two of my favorites. The Brew Rosé from J Vineyards in Healdsburg, Sonoma Valley, which is what I'm gonna be using for my cocktails. This is a mid-sized contemporary winery where their main product are the sparkling wines. They use the traditional method champenois, handpick at midnight for peak fruit, and use an ultra gentle and rare cocard press in production. And the Blanc de Blanc from Schramsburg Vineyards in Calistoga, Napa Valley. This historic winery is one of the oldest in the area, dating all the way back to the 19th century, so well worth a visit the next time that you're in Napa. It's surprisingly understated. Even though it's won a James Beard Award and their wines are served at a ton of White House state functions, the brand is relatively unknown. Probably a good thing is it hasn't become massively commercialized. Got my wine? Now I need Ping to help me mix the cocktails. Hey, Ping. Hi. For those of you who don't know Ping, she's a fantastic food blogger and influencer, and she's got the Just Pingalicious account on Instagram, which I'll include a link up here. So go and check her out. I mean, I've always been, I've been a mixologist for 15 years. Been in the bar business in Hollywood, worked and opened a lot of hot night clubs and restaurants all over LA. And I've always loved food and wine. All my friends want the recipes. They asked me to put an Instagram page together, and I did, and I just take pictures of the things I love to make and food and inspirations. And from the Instagram page and all the friends that I have looking on my site and I have a Facebook page called King Alicious as well, I've been doing virtual events because a lot of people can't, well, most people can't leave their house or restaurants bars aren't open, so they want to be their own bartender. So I've been doing virtual classes and virtual events and teaching people online, which is really exciting. And I love doing it live and meeting people from everywhere. You're not limited to where you live now. Which is perfect since we are doing our make at home New Year's Eve party. So Zine? Yes. You ready to pop some champagne with me? Yeah, I am. Ah! Got it! Alright, so we want to have our champagne, we can start. Let's start off with the confetti champagne, which is kind of festive and fun. It's fun for birthdays, it's fun for New Year's, which is coming up. We're going to start off with vanilla vodka, because it has that vanilla, cakey, birthday taste and feel to it. You can purchase a flavored vodka at the store, but alternatively, if you don't have any vanilla vodka, just measure out about half a cup of plain vodka with one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Now for the cocktail, start by getting a wedge of an orange and rim the outside and the inside of your champagne glass. Uh, make sure it's rimmed pretty thick, about an inch, and then you dip it into a bowl of Pop Rocks. You can mix the packets up with different colors for more variety. And then after that, you wanna pour half a shot of vanilla vodka and then add champagne to three quarters full. Then you top it off with ginger ale or ginger beer or even Sprite. And it, that's it, you're done. And you can even hear the Pop Rocks and they pop in your mouth. Cheers! Ooh, I like that. It's very refreshing and you're right. What really is impactful is the Pop Rocks in it. So it's very fun and festive, yeah. And then you can taste it, like all the senses. Given that this is the first one, I'm going to give this a seven out of 10. I think that's fair. Okay. <laughs> Only because I think for me, the ginger ale 
and the vanilla and the vodka are not as pronounced as I would have thought. So I think this is a kind of a very nice, mellow cocktail. The classic champagne cocktail has been around since the late 1800s, and it's recently making a resurgence. The cognac or brandy you add to it elevates it, and you finish it off with either a maraschino cherry or a luxardo cherry, and with an orange twist or an orange slice. First you place the sugar cube in your glass. You add a few drops of bitters into it. Then you slowly pour your champagne into the glass, about almost to the way to the top. Look how pretty that is. It is so pretty, right? You can see the sugar bubbling. Then you take about a teaspoon of either cognac or brandy, and you drizzle that into your champagne. After that, you finish it off with either an orange peel or like I would like to recommend, a Luxardo cherry, which is made from Italy. It is more expensive, but it gives that champagne cocktail that extra glamour and taste. Cheers! Mm, I like that one. I added way too much cognac in that. I can definitely taste that it's a little bit more overpowering, but I, I like the taste. I give it a seven and a half out of 10, probably because the cognac in it gives it a little bit more oomph over the last cocktail for sure. And this is just so pretty with the cherry and the little bubbling uh, sugar and everything at the bottom. Yes, it is. You're a fancy girl. Yes, fancy quite refined. Let's do the last one. This is the morning after champagne cocktail. It's my take on a traditional mimosa. So after Thanksgiving or Christmas, I tend to have a lot of cranberry sauce in the fridge. So as an added bonus, we can use up some leftovers. So start off by scooping two tablespoons of cranberry sauce into the bottom of your glass. Mine's a little chunkier because I'm using the canned stuff. Hey, that was on my list not, not to the stuff. Oh my God. I'm a basic girl. I recommend using either freshly made cranberries with chunks of berries in it, or ones that you buy at the store with that same kind of consistency with juice. Do not buy canned jelly. So pour that, put that in there and pour in your champagne about three quarters of the way full. Then you just top it off with a freshly juiced orange, one whole orange, and that is Perfect. Now, if it tends to overflow because of all the acid, just place your finger on top of the rim and the bubbles will go down. And there we have it. I think it's so pretty with that amber mimosa at the top and the red cranberries at the bottom. Cheers! Let's cheers. Cheers! Mm. See, that's my favorite. I like that one. Oh, I like that. The freshness of the orange is really, really nice in this. And I think maybe because mine is a store-bought uh, cranberry sauce, I'm not picking up as much cranberry as I'm sure you're getting in yours. So I, I agree with you. You gotta do the homemade for maximum effect on this one. So I'm gonna give this one an eight. Okay, well mix it up and maybe you can give it a nine. Yeah, this is so nice because it, it, it adds another to mimosas. It makes it a little more special. Uh, it's so much better once I've mixed it up a little bit. You get the cranberry in there, that's really nice. Okay, eight and a half. Okay, great. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much for showing us these drinks. Here's to a better 2021. Thank God 2020 is behind us. Yes, let's throw those masks away. Cheers. Cheers.